get that money. You're not going to have the money no. to do that. Because from a government, a state government perspective and from a local council perspective, you're just not going to get that level of support because we just ain't big enough. Yeah. Sorry, what about common law? Solomon's power. I mean, you know, people's power. But the fact that we've actually got two separate councils on the council, like for North Bay and, you know, like... We haven't even had just one councillor. Yeah. So we've never had a united voice. Well, I think that this is the start of saying to the council, we, we have a voice, we want you to listen, this is what we want, hold them, to, hold them to task, because if you don't do this, you'll continue to get what you've always been getting, which is my point to you. Um, unfortunately, you don't have the money, uh, you don't have the resources, and I've, and look, let me just tell you, in, in five, in, in one minute, my experience after spending a lot of money here proposing something close to Lime Burners Point, a new extension to Geelong, and I've written about it to the administrators and everybody else, uh, it was to solve problems, create jobs and do other things related to tourism. And what happened from that? Nothing other than the council ignoring me. After writing to them, after meeting with them, after doing things, Tom and I had meetings with them where they sent their, the mayoral advisors and everybody else with their iPads to take notes. It's definitely going to come back to you. Don't worry, we're coming back to you. Nothing. The signal was very clear. Go away. We don't want you. We don't even want to recognise the issue. The problem was it was all promoted in the press. And so the mayor and everybody else are saying, yes, we like this idea. We want to talk about it, whatever. You know, but officially, nothing. They don't want that. So you have to... I mean, the reason why we're having this discussion tonight is because it's important because if you don't have this discussion, it'll just continue the way it's been continued. So and my nothing answer, will happen. My answer is I'd love to see a, a council, but I just don't think it's going to be big enough in terms of the economics to run a council here. Already Queenscliff has its own issues at that size, though it is very direct action local democracy. Um, but I think we could probably spend the next five years struggling and arguing to get our own council. And then we'd get our own council and then we'd struggle and argue for the next five years to get anything close to this, if we ever did. I'm just going past that at this moment and saying the council or the state government are road humps along the way. We've got to deal with them. They're part of the process. Our answer to that is to create momentum and magic. The momentum is generating the energy. The magic is generating this vision that becomes so important as the lungs of Melbourne, as the bird park of the southern Australia, as a tourism important thing that they just have to take notice of. I was reminded the other day that someone who lived down, uh, uh, down at um, Cape Otway in Warrnambool, they said you know, 20 years ago we couldn't get the state government to listen to us until we got them to discover the Great Ocean Road and the 12 Apostles and then we've got money and priority. So we've got to do something like that here. Just like in the Dandenongs, there was a massive fight for the Dandenongs in the early 1900s because the loggers wanted to take the Dandenongs. Yes. And they were on their way. Yeah. And right behind them were the suburbs. And you can see they'd marched up the hill, but they were stopped. And then they started to think, what is it that we really value? Yeah. It's the same thing. Yeah. So for me, it's momentum and magic. And mm -hmm. that's what this sort of conversation is about. Yeah. We've got to find a way. Yeah. Other comments, though, please. So it's what you want. It's really in your hands. I've just thrown out some ideas that could, I think create tremendous value and be a great start for a different type of thinking and a different type of dialogue for the Bellarine. As I said, you're the ones invested in this place, more so than me. I don't live in Australia. But you, 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 you've got a way to think about and communicate about something that's not on the agenda. It's not being discussed. Is anyone really thinking about that other than subdividing land? No. They're just not. And if you think I'm, if you think I'm wrong, please say so. But it's just the way it is. I know it is. I've just spent a lot of time talking with these people, trying to understand how they, how they deal with this stuff. The council, by the way, is supposed to be here tonight. Tom and I have already met with them. And I'm sure they didn't want to show up because they were going to feel bad about it. 
But, you know, there's no point to be defensive about something. I mean, we want to have a proper constructive dialogue with them about how to do stuff. And nothing we're saying here is, this is your place, you're the community. You're entitled to this. If you don't like the idea of a park, to hell with the park. If you don't want aqua farming out here, to hell with that. You know, we don't have to, have to raise it, we can bury it now, don't even have to talk about it. If you, all you want is 350 square metre plots, lined up from Newcomb to Port Arlington, then you can have that. Well, they're just on every bird, on every television antenna, you can imagine. I mean, just think about it, you know. So if that's what you want, that that's what's going to create uniqueness and value to your place, then that's right. So the only point I disagree with Jude on was the fact that population will make a difference. Because this is the problem most places in the world now. Everyone's besotted by growth rather than efficiency, rather than a point of difference rather than uniqueness. And I said very specifically that Bellarine has something that most other places can't even dream of, uniqueness. And what I didn't talk about was the five, three, five key things that Geelong has that no other place in Australia has. Deep water port, international airport, trains to everywhere, road network to everywhere, and a redundant industrial infrastructure that's ready to be converted to anything North Geelong. You can't get that anywhere else. So whether it's smart technology, whatever it is, it's just the infrastructure is there. Lindsay Fox, who I know, is, has got a 10-year battle ahead of him to try and get a deep water port at Western Port. Western Port Bay. He can't get the approvals. You don't need the approvals here, it's there. Start work, reinvent, reanalyze, refocus. It's all there. What I'm talking about is just the Bellarine. And I'm talking about how we distinguish the Bellarine from everything else to make it globally unique. It can be globally unique. Are there other sure. questions? Other questions or comments as we're now in the wrap-up stage and particularly focusing on what actions should we take or could you take or ideas that there are? Please, Patrick. Yes. Oh, and by the way, Patrick, just before you talk, Please do remember that up the back are some wonderful <laughs> photographs of Patrick's which deserve to be bought tonight. So please, before you go, if everyone could buy one photograph, it would be fantastic for Patrick and the environment. Well, we have credit cards. No. <laughs> Thank you. But now, Patrick. So, I just, just want to come back to the idea of uh, a major part. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't, my comment really wasn't about the aquaculture potential, that's another issue. Um, so, so I think what, what we've got Vision 2, which is all Geelong-centric. We need a Vision 3, which is Bellarine-centric. Mm. It has green space involved, mm. but the idea of a park... If you could just move to one side, we can see the oh, map. Um, so we've got the marine park covering the, the, the port for the Bay Heads, but most of the land in the national... It's a national park, the mm. one of the mm. is, is uh, in the east, in Cape Chen. Uh, so... The, the concept that the Queen's uh, Council has been promoting recently is to uh, provide a network of park systems of all the uh, salt marshes and aquatic areas, and there's 13 or 14 of them on the Bellarine Peninsula, and to manage them as a whole as a, uh, a park system. But at a higher level, what makes sense to me is you extend the National Park, which is the Marine National Park, onto the Bellarine Coast, and we have the Marine Park going right across from Cape Shank onto the Bellarine, and then including Swan Bay and these aquatic reserves. So we're extending a Marine Park, uh, or a National Park, rather than uh, necessarily creating a brand new one. And it's a lot easier to extend a park than, than to create a new space. And by the way, on that, Victoria Parks, which is the authority, they, they're really switched on. I mean, if you just look at their website, which I've done, I mean, they they very uh, focused on what they do and how they do it, and to create great spaces. I mean, there's a, an organisation has capability. Yeah. That's, oh, sorry. sorry, the difference being the federal government versus the state yeah. government. Um, so, so as a, a 
key issue. I'm not saying we shouldn't uh, strive to have green yeah. spaces, and I think they need to be linked. No, by, my point was I to try and create a balance, because you not need a place for people to land, as well as to explore offshore. Yes. But I the, think it's all a great idea, and I think we're, the yeah. idea of Valerie to be a national park network, including the big park or several big parks here, and the marine park and everything, really needs to be looked at. I think it's a great idea. Mary? Uh, two things. Firstly, can the Bellarine Peninsula be a mecca for eco development? So, if we have to have houses, let's let's be really anal about how they're built, and just say that that's the only what the only kind of development we're going to accept. And secondly, how do we get more people? Um, it's actually really like it's just so awesome that all you guys are here tonight and we just love you so much. Thank you so much for coming. But the it's so hard to get people. How do we connect? Do we get each one of us to make a connection <coughs> to invite six people for dinner and we we have like a like a dinner conversation on the topic and we actually commit to having like we you know, maybe Peter or Tom creates some dinner party discussion on it or something, I don't know, and you just, we do it through our social networks or something like that. Um, I, think that's a, I think that's a good thing, but what I'd say, and uh, with no disrespect to Patrick, is that I think one of the biggest failings in Geelong is the media. Because I think the media have let the council go way too many times and haven't held them accountable for way too many things. You know, there's just been so much going on in Geelong that just seems to slip under the radar. And I can remember the time when Keith Fagg got elected to mayor and, and, you know, there was this crisis and Dennis Knapp theme was coming down and they were talking about jobs because Alcoa was just announcing they were going, Ford was on the, you know, all, everything was on the ropes and the front page of the Geelong Advertiser was all about jobs, jobs, jobs. What happened? Absolutely nothing happened. Was there any change in policy? No. I mean, when we talk to the council about something as simple as saying, if you happen to approve a residential subdivision, please make it a requirement for the developer to include a bike, a bike path so that you physically get a connection to all of these places. That doesn't cost anything, really. And it doesn't take any time or effort. And the council already makes responses of bicycle riding on the Pellerine Peninsula. But what's happened? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. It hasn't even made it the agenda. For something as simple as that. So unless somebody organised around a community group like this that's going to hold the council to account, nothing will happen. You'll just get what you've always been getting. How, how, how the council...